This is just a still image from the video of the flight I made in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 over the Rice Army Airfield. So you'll have a better understanding of what you're seeing in the video. You need to learn a little bit of history about the Rice Army Airfield and the Desert Training Center. Before we can talk about the Rice Army Air Base and its role in World War II, we need to talk about the Desert Training Center. In early 1942, the U.S. Army established the Desert Training Center to prepare soldiers for the harsh desert conditions that would be faced when fighting the German Army in North Africa. The War Department used over 18,000 square miles of desolate land in southeastern California and western Arizona, where it trained over half a million soldiers on desert warfare tactics and survival in extreme conditions. For two years, 13 infantry divisions and seven armored divisions marched and drove over the vast desert landscape. This massive training ground consisted of 13 divisional camps and numerous railroad sidings, ammunition dumps, hospitals, airfields, of which the Rice Army Airfield was one, and quartermaster depots. By May 1943, the German Africa Corps had been defeated and desert training was no longer a necessity. However, training lasted for another year until it was officially closed in April 1944. The Rice Army Airfield was a small airfield located inside of the Desert Training Center. It was used to train pilots and crews of aircraft whose mission it was to support ground troops. This included a wide variety of aircraft from observation planes to bombers. The airfield consisted of two paved 5,000-foot runways and numerous dispersal pads extending off the runways to the south. In order to house the more than 3,000 men, the Army constructed temporary barracks and other buildings. By 1944, the airfield was assigned to March Field as a sub-base. Rice Army Airfield was closed later mid-1944 and declared surplus at the end of 1944. You'll see two things ahead of us running left and right. The first one you see is Highway 62. The second thing you see is part of the California Aqueduct. It's actually referred to as the Colorado River Aqueduct, and it was completed in January of 1939 and carried water out to the Desert Training Center.
The two intersecting lines you see, kind of light brown off to the right, are actually an intersection of the two runways at the Rice Airfield. I always say, what's the fun in visiting one of these places if you don't try to land at it? So these were paved runways, and if you dig down underneath all that vegetation and the sand, I understand you can actually find some of the uh, old concrete or asphalt, whatever it was. If you look closely, something you can see on the non-runway side of the highway are the outlines of the foundations and the streets and the roads and the buildings and the barracks from where they had the entire Desert Training Center set up for this particular operation. Shoot, there's the other runway. Let's see if we can land on the second runway. In 1944, when the government gave up 
the Desert Training Center, it actually came under the control of the Bureau of Land Management, all 18,000 square miles of it. So these are public lands. Coming into the right side of the frame, you'll see another two runways that are quite a bit shorter than the previous ones we saw. Let's get back to the aircraft and go fly some more. My wife and I enjoy taking our four-wheel drive vehicle into the California desert and do some exploring. This is the place that is now on my bucket list.
As you look below, you can see the layout of some of the streets and buildings that still scar the desert floor. Just ahead of and to the left of the aircraft is another pair of runways. So I'm going to be circling for a little while just to shed some altitude and I'll pick this back up when I get closer to the ground. And here's a point to ponder. If it weren't for places like the Desert Training Center and the Rice Army Air Base, and all of the half million or more men who were trained here, we might all be speaking German today. Let's make our last landing here on one of those smaller runways we saw from the air. Thank you for joining me on this journey back in time. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you'll join me for a visit again to yet another abandoned airfield. <laughs>